Alright guys, welcome to another beer review and today we're going over to Burnt Mill uh, first time in a while actually and this is a can of the Maltea and Mosaic which is a dual hop IPA uh, part of the Gardens of Green series clocking in at 6.2% ABV lovely artwork there so after the season just come in I've walked, I'm out of breath I'm overweight so so God Gardens of Greens is a drill hop IPA series tailoring recipes and process to best express each hop combination. The first in this series combines Moutier and Mosaic, where Moutier's pungent grapefruit tropical and passion fruit aromas are complemented by the stone fruit, citrus and pine provided by Mosaic. A base of super and extra power malt is backed up by a little wheat to allow the subtle hop nuances to shine through. And uh, yeah, I picked this up from Beer Moth in Manchester. Uh, the, the can artwork um, got me into it. Paid £6.25 for this. So, without any further ado, let's see what we get and pour it into the glass. And that is pouring so, so nicely. There we go. So, beer in the glass then. And that is uh, definitely a turbid, hazy beer. Sort of like a pale, chalky, yellowy look to it. Almost like um, lemon curd. Maybe a bit of like a hazy honey. But uh, yeah, powdery. It's got that sort of like whitey powdery look. And um, it looks a bit darker on camera. So, beer poured with two figures worth of a nice white compact head. Looks really nice in this snifter glass. So let's see what we get on my nose. Oh yeah, that's really nice and mellow. It's got a nice sort of juicy sweetness to it. A little bit of pine, a little bit of um, oniony garlicky character, a little bit of grapefruit, got that sort of um, breakfast juice aroma, even like a little bit of clementine as well. But yeah, earthy, dank, but still sweet at the same time. A nice sort of balance of those two characters. So, it smells really nice and appetising, especially after a tedious day at work. So, we'll let's give it a taste. Cheers. Lovely smooth mouthfeel. It's not the boldest, it's not the heaviest, but it's still got a nice amount of girth to it. Lovely bitterness on the back end. Just the right amount of bitterness for me. Loads of grapefruit on flavour. It's soft, it's pillowy. It's not the most pungent of IPAs. It is a bit more mellow and reined in. A little bit of pear character coming through almost. Not really tropical. Um, very resinous, I would say. Although it doesn't feel sticky, you get the impression it's sticky from that resiny character. Loads of pine. It's got a bit of like a a west coast pungency, I suppose, but it's softened by those really gentle, sweet, fruity characters. But yeah, it's so damn drinkable. Um, my good friend Dean made a really good point um, on his review of uh, one of North's Session uh, Pale Ales, which was the Root Pale. I have to pause this for now. So yeah, quick change of location because I got interrupted. Thank God I can actually pause the video and then carry on recording. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, it's just a, a really devastatingly drinkable beer. And the point I was making, I think, was my good friend Dean um, made this comment when he was um, reviewing Root Beer. I think it's called Root Beer. Uh, from North, which is like the Session IPA or Pale Ale. And he made a point like, <sighs> all of these beers are sessionable. Because no matter what the ABV, nine times out of ten, you, you just don't get it. You just do not get it, and it just becomes such an easily drinkable <sighs> path of destruction. I mean, 6.2%, no way. And it's got the body and the complexity 
of a 6.2% IPA. But it's just not tasting like that and it's just drinking ridiculously easy. I really like that. It's not bombastic. It's not really in your face. It's not too extravagant. You know, it's not up there with the, you know, the, the Hayes Bros, you know, Hall of Fame. But I like that about it. It's simple. It's tasty. It's laid back. It's just you sink it down after a work day. You could happily session the shit out of this. And yet the mosaic shines through. I've not really had too many beers of Mutera. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. But I'm, I'm guessing those grapefruit characters are coming from that. But yeah, if you like your earthy, dank IPAs that still have that fruitiness, that aren't ridiculously sweet, and you get the bitterness on the back end, I think you're going to really enjoy this. And I've had a great experience with IPAs from Burnt Mill. Um, I think they're such a... I don't, I'm not going to say underrated because they do get the um, the recognition um, within the, s the circle. But um, that sounds so fucking stupid. There's no circle. Well, there is, but those people don't matter. I don't care about those people. I don't care about status when it comes to beer. I don't care if you're trading, you know, for the big in-your-face IPAs from America. <sighs> I'm not going to respect you more because of that. Um, do you know what I mean? It just status when it comes to beer means absolutely fuck all to me. Just enjoy the beers. That's all you need to do. And this is one of those beers. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Lovely tanginess there as well. Anyway, so in terms of a rating then on this beer, um, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I think money well spent because that's the price that a lot of these um, IPAs now command. And we don't get it wrong, a couple of quid cheaper, I might give it a few more points, but I'm not going to hold that against either Burnt Mill or Beermoth, because at the end of the day, these breweries, these bottle shops, they need to make money, and it wasn't you know, outrageously expensive, let's be honest. Um, and that, that reminds me, you know, I just saw a post from Rob from Hopscene about uh, the triangle in Shipley getting broken into again and like over a thousand pounds. Oh, I can't remember if it was a thousand pounds or like ten grand's worth of stock stolen. And it's just like, what the fuck? The only person who's going to steal from a shop like that is someone who knows a lot about this. So that's that's such a f fucking awful thing to do. So. Yeah, I'm happy to pay a little bit more um, to support a shop that I could go to. I mean, do I get to go to Manchester all the time? No. Do I get to go to BMF all the time? No, but I got a lovely little haul last time I was there. Didn't spend too much. I think I've got my money's worth. So, um, yeah, you've seen all these like clickbait posts of like the most expensive pint in London. Well, guess what, shit stain? Nobody fucking buys a pint of that beer. They buy it in the... F the serving suggestion that the bar or tap room is selling it do you know what i mean and if someone is buying you know a pint that's worth like 22 quid more power to them do you know what i mean it's their money do you know what i mean stop like trying to use that as like a hitting stick against like craft beer guess what you sometimes have to pay a little bit more for quality that being said look at the supermarkets i mean we've got you can't see it on camera now but you know, um, tonight I'm going to be doing um, Cloudwater, Brewdogs, New England IPA versus Magic Rocks Luminance. Two beers that are definitely bottle shop worthy. But for like £3 each. And yeah, I mean, is there much between this and that? I can't say that right now. I loved both of the beers that I've just mentioned. I'm loving this beer. And... Uh, yeah, it's just maybe a couple of quid or maybe a quid less, then I'll probably give it a bit more of a generous review. But do you know what? 8 out of 10 is a sure sign for you to try this beer. And do you know what, Burnt Mill? They know what they're doing. Um, I've got an Imperial a Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout that I got for the Mickle Beer Club, which I'm saving for a bottle show, which I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do that style. 
But I've really enjoyed their IPAs, double IPAs and pale ales. I think they're such a great brewery. And uh, they're one of those breweries that I don't drink enough of. And when I drink something like this, I'm telling myself, you need to drink more from that brewery. So yeah, if you see this beer, highly, highly recommended. It's got something a little bit different about it. Do you know what I mean? It's not just, you know, what's that? Something rinse, repeat. Is that what the term is? I don't know. You know, a lot of these IPAs, double IPAs, as much as they're enjoyable, they're not really, there's not really too much to differentiate, which is not a bad thing because, you know, why not have more of a good thing? Do you know what I mean? But I get intrigued when I get a beer like this where it's like, oh, hang on a minute. There's a little bit of a flavour, a little bit of a twist and a turn that I wasn't expecting. And yeah, I'm really interested to see how this series develops. Um, will I probably get around to drinking them all? Probably not. Do you know what I mean? But am I too upset about that? No, because I know for a fact that another beer by Burnt Mill, I'm pointing over there because the can's on the shelf, um, another beer by Burnt Mill will just wow me as much as this one, and a beer from another brewery will wow me just as much as that one. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't need to get every beer that's available um, when they become available. Because I would literally have even less money than I have now. But, um, yeah, wow, that was quite a tangent going on about price. But hey-ho. Anyway. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Got some Donner meat on the go as well. I know you shouldn't really pair this with Donner meat because the snobs out there will uh, make your hand make your hand in your craft card. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward. It's got to be gone before it's cooked anyway, so... Who cares? Just drink it. Enjoy it. And shout from the hilltops if you like it. That's what it's all about. And I really, really like this one. So if you tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Are you a fan of Burnt Mill? Are you a fan of these sorts of beers? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Go check out the brewery down below. Check out Beer Moth. Uh, you've probably already been there when you've been in Manchester. But if you're making a trip to Manchester, definitely do yourselves a favour and go to Beer Moth. And also Cafe Beer Moth which I was there recently as well, and they do really good crisps. Um, what are they called? I can't remember, but it's like uh, some sort of Spanish cooked, Spanish cured ham flavour crisp. They were just like, oh, oh, I had it with a doppel bop, and it was just like, oh, it was like, oh, do you know what I mean? Uh, that could be definitely taken out of context. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.